This presentation is brought to you by Experts for Entrepreneurs. Our host is Josh Turner of Gateway CFO Solutions and LinkedSelling.com. The subject is how to build expertise, generate leads, and grow sales with LinkedIn. In this presentation, Josh goes through the step-by-step -step process he's used to grow a targeted database of 3,000 connections, systematically market to new prospects, and grow sales. So, why LinkedIn? All right, everybody knows that you know we're all selling something, and that the old way doesn't always work anymore, right? I'm not going to beat that drum too much. And the new way, as everybody says, is, is being social, establishing authority, expertise, leadership, becoming a resource. All right, everybody is trying to figure out where to place their chips with this whole internet marketing, online social media, all these different options. And it's my contention that LinkedIn is the best business to business resource for finding contacts, building relationships, generating leads, and growing sales. Facebook, good for individuals promoting products to consumers. Twitter, maybe better for real time communications, maybe a little more leaning towards B2C. LinkedIn is really all about business, right? So who's on LinkedIn? LinkedIn's got over 135 million users worldwide. 77% are age 25 and above. The average household income is 109,000. And frankly, if you're a B2B business, pretty much all of your prospects are on LinkedIn, right? So I do a lot of work in the construction space. I work with a lot of contractors and, and suppliers to the construction industry. And they all have a problem, and really all businesses have a problem. How best to determine who your prospects are and what's the best way to get in front of them? It's my contention that LinkedIn offers one of the most targeted resources for finding and marketing to the right prospects. So today what we're going to talk about, like I said, is really my methodology for how I go about getting found on LinkedIn and how you can rank for your targeted search phrases turning your profile into a lead generation tool as opposed to just an online business card that's not really working for you. The best way is to go about discovering and connecting with new prospects, how to build a large targeted database and why I think it's important to do so, how to drive traffic to your site from LinkedIn, how to establish expertise and authority in your space, why all of these LinkedIn things integrate so well with all the rest of your marketing efforts and PR efforts and then some of the best ways to make offers and sell on LinkedIn. So the first step really in a LinkedIn strategy is getting found and making sure your profile is properly set up. Right? If you don't have a good profile, all the other stuff um, really is kind of a waste of time. So the first thing you got to do is set up your profile and optimize it so that you can be found, really. And the way that you're found on LinkedIn, the way their search algorithm works, when you search for a person, right, the top section that says people, and you can search for people based on whatever you want to search for, the way that they rank people is based on how many times that keyword shows up throughout their profile in certain places, not in every place. So I'm going to go through some of that really quick. I don't want to dwell on this because I think you guys will quickly pick up on the concept. But you can see here that the word CFO is very important to me. And if you type in CFO on LinkedIn in the people search, I come up usually on the first page, sometimes at the top of the second. And so that's in the top 10 results for CFO on LinkedIn out of over 300,000 results that it returns. The reason is because I've got the word CFO all over my profile. You have to do it in a non-spammy fashion. You don't, you don't really want it to just do a bunch of keyword stuffing so that your profile looks like junk and that if a prospect looks at it, you, you kind of look like a joke. That's no good for anybody. But you can see here in the headline up top, part-time CFO for small business owners, instruction marketing expert, founder of Gateway CFO Solutions. You can see how it's highlighted there. LinkedIn provided that highlighting of CFO when I did the search and went to my page. So it's clear that that's how they're indexing and that's how they're determining relevance for certain search results. So both in your headline and in all of your current and past experiences, which is towards the bottom there, that's, that's where most of the action happens with the keywords. I want to go back to the headline for a quick second. It's important that you make it meaningful. Right? 
a lot of people don't take advantage of this and they put something generic and I have been guilty of this in the past such as president at Gateway CFO Solutions LLC. That doesn't tell anybody anything. You want to tell people in that headline how you help business owners, what you're all about. And take advantage of the space they give you. Uh, be creative with it. And that way when people are, are kind of searching through your profiles, you give them a reason to click on it. You know, president at Acme Services, that doesn't mean anything to anybody, right? Okay, so another place that is very important but not for keywords is the summary section. You, you get a limited amount of characters here and you want to use them effectively. I'm going to talk more about that in a minute because this is where I really um, get into the whole lead generation thing and how you can use your profile to, to generate new prospects, drive traffic, all that kind of stuff. But there's a smiley face that's turned upside down there um, because I don't believe LinkedIn indexes keywords here. So no, no need to you know, clutter up your summary section with a bunch of keywords because um, one, that'll turn people off, and two, LinkedIn isn't indexing that section of your profile. They do index the specialties section. So you can see I've included the word CFO in a number of places in my specialties. So when you think about the keyword that you want to use, when people search on LinkedIn, if you want to be found for marketing expert or whatever it might be, then specialties is a good place to get that phrase in there a lot of times. You can see down below in experience, it does the same thing again. It goes through and it picks up on all your positions and it's using that. And if you've got this, that keyword in a bunch of different positions, that's really going to move you up in the rankings. Recommendations. This is a, a great reason why recommendations are important. One, recommendations provide that social proof that you are who you say you are um, and that uh, you've got an active network, that you've had a lot of great relationships in the past, but it also if you've got a recommendation for each position, they, they index the keywords in those descriptions, as you can see, highlighted in yellow there again. So it's very important to have those. And another thing I like to do is take those testimonials off of LinkedIn and put them on my website, use them in marketing materials. Why not? Custom URLs. Now, this doesn't have anything to do with optimizing your profile to show up for keywords, but it is about making your profile effective as a lead generation tool. So the standard thing you see on people's LinkedIn profiles says company website, right? And then you click it and it takes you to their website. Well, if you go to edit your profile and click other, it allows you to type in whatever you want to be there, right? So like where I say proactively plan cash flow, um, gateway CFO solutions. Instead of just saying company website, I can put in whatever I want. So if you make that more of a call to action, that's a great way to drive traffic to your site. Another thing you can do to make your profile really impactful is add a video to set yourself apart. I haven't done this yet on my, on my profile, but I see people doing it more and more. It's, it's very cool stuff. Use a SlideShare application. Go to LinkedIn Applications and uh, add SlideShare. And then within SlideShare, you can embed a video like this, and you can even set it up to autoplay so that when somebody visits your profile, you get either maybe it's yourself talking about what benefits you provide to your clients and what makes you special. Uh, it could be a testimonial from somebody about you like this guy has. Very cool stuff and if you want to know more about setting up a SlideShare uh, video on your LinkedIn profile, just go to uh, Google and, and search for how to SlideShare video LinkedIn and there's all sorts of articles about how to do it. So let's talk about this for a second. Lead generation tool greater than online business card. The summary section of your profile is, um, is where people are going to really look and see what does this guy say he's all about, right? So now, what I used to have on my profile was a, was a, a section that just kind of listed all the services I provided, right? And that's probably what most people do. Some people don't even go that far. They don't even have anything in there, which is just a total mistake. What I believe people should be doing that are interested in using LinkedIn to get people into their sales funnel is calls for action, okay? So like you can see here, I've got two different calls for action, calls to action. One is to get people to go to my website to get a free copy of Cash Flow Clarity, a guide about proactively managing cash flow. And you can see that I've got that little black arrow to the left of it, all right? And down below, another call to action please visit constructionselling.com for a free report, right? So that's what you can do. Whatever your business is, you need to think about ways so that when people are looking at your profile, they could be your prospects. They, generally speaking, 
they're not just going to look at your LinkedIn profile and send you a message and say, I think you're awesome. I want to meet with you and work with you. It usually doesn't happen like that. So you got to think about who's going to be looking at my profile and how can I get them to that next step in my sales cycle, right? So it's just like you would on your, your website. You got to have a call to action that's meaningful and that's something they're going to be interested in. And that's how I do it. So the next step is connecting. You first you got to figure out who are you targeting, right? I work with a lot of contractors. So for me, construction professionals are a great target market for these people. Where are these people, right? Most of them are parts of groups. Most, I mean, I could join all sorts of construction related groups and connect with all sorts of people that are relevant to the work that I do. So here's how I go about connecting with these people. And I'm going to talk in just a minute about why it's important to connect with so many people. Within LinkedIn, you can search all sorts of ways. You can drill down by industry. So here I've got, you can see at the bottom, I've got it defined the St. Louis area. And I typed owner in the search and searched for uh, contracting industry, something of that nature. And then you get just a huge... Um, you know, list of people. You can see 196 here based on this search that, that fit that, right? And so there's all sorts of ways that you can look at that to generate prospects. So why you want lots of connections? LinkedIn essentially allows you to be found with three degrees of connections, all right? The reason why that's important is the more people you're connected to, the more people can find you in search and the more people that you can you can find when you're doing your prospecting. So let's take a look at, at all these things on the screen here. You can see 3,000 connections, 2,954 over there on the left, connects me to 18 million plus professionals. Now if I only had, let's say, 100 um, connections on LinkedIn, that number would be much lower. I'm, I would guess well under a million, right? And the reason why that's important is because if you want to use LinkedIn to develop business, build relationships with people that you don't know yet, prospects, then you want to have as big a network as possible because when you go and do a search for owners of construction companies in St. Louis, the only results that you can see are the people that are within three degrees of you. And the, the three degrees means this. Your connections are your first degree connections. The people that they're connected to, second degree, and then their connections are third degree. Anyone else outside of that is behind a wall that you don't have access to. You can't, you can't look at their information. Sometimes they'll come up in search results, but they'll hide the last name and um, sometimes not give you profile information. They, you know, it, it's just if you want to build a database of connections on LinkedIn. And as I continue going along here, I think you'll see why that's important. Then um, all this stuff is very important. So here's, here's the proof in the pudding, as they say. The, the, the graphs on the right there, the first one shows the number of times my profile has been viewed over the last couple months, since October 23rd, right? Total views, 545, okay? That, that's pretty solid for me. I feel pretty good about that. Now. The reason why I need my profile to be a lead generation tool is because otherwise these people look at my profile and then don't do anything, right? I want some of those people to take some sort of action to engage with my business, right? So then down below, you can see um, in the next trends box, appearances in search, 1,664 times. Take, a note, take notice of how that is trending upward, okay? And it's not trending upward because I've continued to work on optimizing my profile to come up better for keywords. That's not it. It's because I'm continuing to grow my database of connections and then I appear in more people's search results. The more connections you have, the more times you appear in search results. Right? So all that stuff is very, very important. Now, how did I go and get 3,000 connections? And I will be perfectly honest, I know personally probably 300 of them. Something like that. There's just no way that you know 2,900 people are people I actually know. So that cat is out of the bag. Here's how I did it. 
right? And I believe this strategy can work for pretty much anybody. I first decided who do I want to build this database with? Who, who are my prospects? Who are the people that I want to be getting my message in front of? So I said, you know, I want to do more work with construction companies in the St. Louis area. So I went in, I joined some groups where those people hang out, such as the St. Louis Contractor Referral Network. As a member of that group, I'm able to search the membership for certain terms. You can see up there top left that I searched for owner, got over 500 results. The next thing I did right, was added all of them. But you don't just go and add a connection and send that generic stock message that LinkedIn sends out. It has to be a personal introduction, but that can take time. So when I started doing this, uh, I had probably 500 connections on LinkedIn. And I took it from 500 to about 1,500 doing this. So all of a sudden, I had a, a, a database of 1,500 very targeted connections um, that are meaningful to my business on LinkedIn. And the way I did it so that I would have a big success rate is I sent each of them a personal note. Now, the key is, is that I didn't write a special note for each of them. I cut and paste the note like this and says, hey, I took a look at your profile and thought we might benefit from being connected. Hope to meet you at a future event put their name in it, obviously. You don't want to use that standard stock LinkedIn. I'd like to add you to my network on LinkedIn. Because when people get that, if they don't know you, it just looks like spam, that you haven't taken any time to look at their profile, and that you're just trying to build a big database and you don't care about them. So you have to put a customized message in. And not many people are doing this. I don't get very many connection requests at all of this nature. So when people get these, especially people that aren't working LinkedIn very hard, that are just kind of using it as a Rolodex and maybe looking at status updates and kind of getting involved in groups a little bit, this looks special to them. And when they see it, sometimes I get responses saying, hey, I appreciate you checking me out. Yeah, I'd love to be connected. So in the first big push of getting in groups like St. Louis Contractor Referral Network, other St. Louis-based groups where high-level decision makers are hanging out, I probably requested approximately 2,000 connections, right? And that takes a significant amount of time to do manually. There's no way to game the system. You got to sit down and put in the hours to do it. So you're you're going to have um, you know tired eyes after looking at the computer for a while. But it's important that you knock it all out in a short amount of time for one reason. And let me let me just first say that I did about probably 2,000 invitations and probably got a thousand that that accepted. And I did the same thing with the personal message on each of them. And I just kept a couple windows open on my screen and back and forth, you know, down the list, add, 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 copy and paste, copy and paste, put their name in it, send it out over and over again for quite a few hours, right? The reason that you got to do it in one shot is that LinkedIn has a way of knowing if you're adding connections that uh, are requesting connections for people that you don't actually know. When somebody gets a connection request from you, they can say, as, as you guys probably already know, they can either accept your request, ignore your request, or they can click that they don't know you, which then tells LinkedIn, all right, that information goes to LinkedIn. And when LinkedIn gets enough of those I don't know you's related to you, they will eventually take away your privileges, all right, to connect with new people, to add new people. They don't, they don't kick you out of the network. They take away the privilege. But here's the thing. So when you send out 2,000 personal introductions like this to request with people, it is virtually a guarantee that this is going to happen to you. And it's happened to me, and I've done it with, with other people that I've worked with on LinkedIn. But what you do is they'll take away your privileges. You won't be able to connect anymore. You send LinkedIn customer service an email. You tell them that you're sorry <laughs> and uh, that you're not going to do it anymore. That's it. And then they reinstate your connection privileges so that you can go back about your normal LinkedIn routine. So you really only get one shot at doing this to grow your database really fast. Okay, Here's another way to grow your database. Like I said, I went from 500 to about 1,500 connections by doing what I just said. So at that point, I had about 1,500 total connections, all very relevant, targeted, you know, very meaningful to my business. From there, I joined what's called toplinked.com. Okay? Top is a service that essentially you join. It costs nine dollars a month. Uh, you can just join it for a month and get you know a pretty big impact out of it. 
or you can pay $60 for a year. They got a couple different options. You get added to a database of people who have agreed to accept connections from anybody. You know, so you might you may have seen on LinkedIn people that have the word lion, L I O N in their uh, in their name or headline. That means LinkedIn open networker, which means they will accept requests from anybody. Toplink.com, you get added to this database by paying your nine dollars for the first month, right? Or nine dollars every additional month or sixty bucks for the year. And then you get a spreadsheet that you can download with over a thousand people that are a part of this that are willing to accept connection requests. So then you can go in and add all those people by mass. LinkedIn has a connection function to where you can import a CSV file or spreadsheet and it'll send a mass connection request to all the email addresses on that list. So by doing that, in about 10 minutes, you can send a connection request to the, I don't know, 1,000 or 1,500 people that are part of TopLink. And very quickly, you will have a lot of connections, right? Now, I did that second. Some people, but that's because I started with about 500 connections when I started getting very aggressive with LinkedIn. Now, if you have only, let's say, 50 or 100 connections or maybe even 200, you might want to start with this because, like I said earlier, the more connections you have, the more people you will be able to find when you're searching for prospects. And so uh, that second part of my, the first part of the strategy that I talked about where you go into groups that matter and you're requesting connections with people that are relevant to your business that are good prospects for you to market to, um, you might want to consider doing this thing first. It just depends on where you're currently at with LinkedIn. So that's toplink.com. So what do you do with all these connections, right? It's, you know, it, everybody's heard the thing about, you know, it takes seven touches, it takes 12 touches, it takes 30 touches, whatever it is, before a prospect potentially or eventually turns into a client or a sale, right? So it works the same with LinkedIn. Just being connected to somebody and that's one touch you could say if they go look at your profile, that's not going to change the world for you. You have to have a method for staying in front of these people on an ongoing basis. Right? So one of the ways to do that initially is to send an introductory email such as this woman sent me saying, hey, thanks for the connection. Um, I look forward to keeping in touch here. Here's what my business is about. Right? Easy to do that because you get, you get notices about new connections, people that you're connected to. Uh, so you could send a few of these out a day. It's a good thing to do. Another thing that I like to do, both for myself and that I help my clients with, is setting up a messaging campaign within LinkedIn. Um, 200 messages a month to send to prospects is a good way to go. And basically what you're trying to do is figure out who of these 2,954 connections are the people that are you know real prospects for me, right? And maybe narrow it down to about 200, something like that and then set up a campaign to message them with relevant stuff on a regular basis. Right? And now, it's not, it's not the kind of stuff, as you might suspect, just with email marketing or any other marketing, you, you can't be sending them promotional messages once a month because they will tune you out and never do business with you. But if you come to be respected as almost a friend of theirs, a resource, an expert, do things like this. Send something out. Hey, Jim, I, I thought you might like this article. I hope you're doing well. Send it out to them. You know, if you do that and then you do 10 of those a day, then over the course of the month, you're sending that message to 200 people. Then in the next month, you find a new way to get in front of them on LinkedIn. You know, whether it's, hey, I got a webinar coming up, or here's another article I wrote, or here's an article I found that I thought you might like, or, you know, Jim, hey, Jim, just wanted to touch, but how's business going? You know, I saw your company in the news, whatever it is. If you do that 200 people over the course of 6 to 12 months and you're touching them once a month, that's going to generate business. And depending on your business, you can be more direct with it. An example of that is a client I worked with last spring who saw some of the success I was having on LinkedIn. And I said, you know, you sell to businesses. His clients are contractors. And I said, you know, those guys are always looking for new opportunities, new, new subcontractors that they can work with because they always want more bids. So I said, you know what, let's get in some groups. Let's fix your profile up a little bit. Find about 100 contractors that would be good potential clients for you. Ask them to be connections of yours. Send them a nice little message that looks personal, 
but you're copying and pasting and putting their name in it. And then send them a message that says, hey, here's a little bit about my company. Um, I'd love to you know, take a look at any of your uh, work that you guys are bidding. If you need another set of eyes on something, please let me know. Uh, I look forward to keeping in touch. He got three bid opportunities within a week, uh, and I believe one or two of which resulted in sales. And he spent a few hours on it, right? So it's a strategy that can work very well because very few people are doing it the right way. So, as always, it can take a number of touches before someone turns into a customer. You have to be willing to do it for the long haul. If you're going to go in and do it once, just like anything else, if you're going to do it, uh, be ready to do it right and plan for how you're going to market to these people without annoying them. Another big way of staying in front of people, and one might argue that this is as good as a, a, a touch of any other sort, are status updates. And you can see that I said this isn't the place to talk about your breakfast or love for ponies. LinkedIn is not Facebook. LinkedIn is a place for relevant business stuff. You want to post content that you think your prospects would be interested on a business level. Um, if every once in a while you want to talk about how the Cardinals are doing really well, um, you know that's okay. You know because sometimes you know showing a little bit of personality can be a good thing uh, to get people to feel like they kind of know you and have a relationship with you. Um, but sharing these updates, as you can see here, drives traffic to your site over time. If you're posting an update on LinkedIn a few times a week, you don't have to be spending too much time doing this. Over time, people are going to see this stuff, and then just that reinforcement of your name, your message, your content, that you're the expert, you're sharing valuable stuff with them, it really has an impact. All right, And as you can see from my site, I don't remember, this is from a while back, but I don't know exactly what time frame this was. But you can see that LinkedIn brought uh, 115 visits to my site over some amount of time. Pretty good. You know, I'll take it. That's good stuff. So again, just another way to stay in front of prospects, drive some traffic to your site. Don't be overly promotional. All that good stuff. An easy way to do this with status updates is through LinkedIn Share. Okay, if you have a WordPress site, there's a, several different plugins that can allow you to do this. But it basically just makes it easy to share not only to your status update on LinkedIn, but also to all of your groups. Okay, so you can be a member of up to 50 groups on LinkedIn, and this is the easiest way to share the content from your website, new articles you're writing with these groups. Now, you don't want to just share, send everything to every group you're in. I think we've all seen that in groups we've been a part of, where there's certain people that constantly post every blog they write to every group that they're in, and you might see them in only one group, but they're sharing stuff that is just seemingly worthless and irrelevant to the group. Well, at that point, those people are essentially spamming, right? So you want to make sure that the things you're sharing are relevant to the groups, right? I rarely send a message to every group I'm a member in. Instead, I go through and I think about which groups are going to actually care about this stuff, right? And LinkedIn, again, is one of the biggest drivers of traffic to my website because I consistently post my content to status updates but more importantly to groups. So more about groups, how to connect further with groups. Like I said, you can join as many as 50 groups on LinkedIn. You want to make sure they're the groups where your prospects are hanging out, right? Uh, what You don't want to be in a group establishing expertise and connecting with people that aren't decision makers or influencers that are going to somehow generate business for you unless you're doing it just to kind of hang out and have fun. Um, so here you can follow discussions, you can connect with people, all that good stuff. Where it really gets impactful is where you create your own group, all right? And creating my own group, which is this group here, the Small Biz Forum, has really uh, had a huge impact on my business. Um, I, don't, I can't speak highly enough about uh, the success that I've had with this. And I'm going to talk about how I built the group here and why it's working for me and some of the successes that I've seen from it. So if you're building a group, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have a lot of connections. So I would do all the stuff I just talked about with getting a large database of connections. And once you get to, you know, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, you can, with the strategies I just outlined, you can get to 3,000 connections in a month. I know you can. And if you can just bear down and do that, that's the best time to start a group, okay? When you have connections, because you have to share the group, as you can see in that top right, with all your connections so that then they come join it, 
but you don't want to have uh, a bare bones group. The first thing you want to do is set up the group and don't tell anyone about it. Start posting content to it on a daily basis and do that for two or three weeks so that the group really looks kind of lived in, right? A couple people might find it and join just randomly by searching LinkedIn groups. But then when you go and you invite your 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 connections, all of a sudden they come and they're going to assess whether this is something that they want to be a part of, right? And so when they look at the group, they're going to see that for the last two or three weeks, you've been posting lots of stuff. Now, they're not going to look at the membership numbers on the group usually. Um, they're just going to go and look at the main page and see, is this the kind of stuff I want to be getting? And when I say getting, that's important because most people receive a digest of group activity, so new discussions, comments, and manager's choice on a daily or weekly basis depending on their settings. So these people, when they look at your group, are deciding, is this something I want hitting my inbox? Is this something that I'm going to get value out of? So when you're setting up the group, you got to keep that top of mind. And if it looks like a group for you to promote yourself, then it's going to fail miserably. You have to share an overwhelming amount of content from other people before you share any of your own stuff, right? I've heard the 90-10 rule on that, 90% from other people, 10% from yourself. And I think that sounds about right. Uh, when you're first setting up the group, you might not even include any of your content because you want people to go to it and say, wow, this looks like it'll be a good resource. I like this stuff here. It doesn't look like a guy that's just trying to promote himself. So I'm going to get in on this. So for my business, I did that within a short amount of time. I had a couple hundred members. I think the group is now at a few hundred, several hundred, something like that. And the funny thing is, is when I started it, I thought, man, I got to get, I got to really ramp this up and get get this to a thousand members quickly, you know, three thousand members, whatever it might be, um, to really make a difference. Well, the funny thing about it is that if your group is made up of mostly prospects that you have built connections with based on the things that I outlined earlier, then this is a remarkable and just fantastic way to drip market to those people, to touch them on a daily or weekly basis, not just, not just monthly, right, with the messaging. And the reason why is that every, every week they get one of these messages in their inbox, and you guys are all likely, I'm almost certain you're familiar with this. So every day or every week they get a message in their inbox with the digest of what's going on in your group, and they're gonna, they're, they will come to know you as the expert for your group and also you control the content in that group. I think it's important to to really explain the power of these messages in people's inboxes every day. And I'm going to do that through a couple of examples. For for starters, when when people sign up to these groups, they rarely change the settings for how often they receive the digest in their inbox. So they're going to get them either once a day or once a week depending on their settings. Now people can go in and turn that off, but for one, if you're providing good content and resources, they're not going to do that because they like the stuff that you're bringing to them. And two, oftentimes people find the path of least resistance is just to hit the delete button rather than dealing with the pain of going in LinkedIn trying to figure out how to change their settings to get the email less frequently. So what you're doing is getting your information and your name in front of these people on a daily or weekly basis. I had a new contract, um, new engagement, uh, about a month and a half ago. That um, really, really a great company to work for. And my first meeting with them, I um, I was sitting in uh, the president's office, and on his um, on his screen, he had his Outlook open, and I could see the Small Biz Forum Daily Digest in his inbox, right? So this is somebody that was in my funnel as a prospect, right, receiving these messages, and then within a few weeks, he had a need, and he called me on it. They didn't call anybody else because I was the guy he thought of, right? Another example, um, another company saw what I was doing, saw these messages in their inbox every day, and said, you know, we should be doing this for our company. Let's call this guy, see if he'll 
work with us on it. So there you go. Another contract, another new project client directly as a result of this work. Now I bring this all up because there's a lot of different ways that you can take advantage of these groups, right? Um, one of them is manager's choice, which is sending a targeted message or an announcement, right, that hits everybody's inbox in the group. This is one way to do it. You know, you can promote webinars, events, content, whatever you want. Be careful not to be overly promotional though, or people will tune you out. But the, these groups don't have to be huge ecosystems with tens of thousands of members for it to work for you, right? It's just not, it's not just for information marketers, right? Even my group, when I started, I thought, man, I, I, I really want this. I think once I get to 10,000 people, it's going to really work out for me. Well, um, it, uh, to my surprise, and you know, thankfully, at about 300 members, I'm seeing actual results for my business directly related to these groups. Announcements are very important here because you can send one to all the members up to once a week, right? And sending these announcements, as it says, also posts them as a discussion. So it's really, it's a great way to promote events, like I said, connect with people even further. Um, just can't, uh, I can't say enough about the power of LinkedIn groups for establishing expertise, becoming the guy or the, the, the girl, the woman in your space, the go-to person for whatever your area of expertise is. A few other things that are important about LinkedIn and things that you know you might find some value in LinkedIn events. You can use LinkedIn events to promote your own events. Okay, another great way to use LinkedIn events is to research for prospects. Okay, so let's say that you are looking for people in St. Louis that are interested in search engine optimization. Right. Um, you might um, you might go here and type in St. Louis SEO, look over some events that we've been on LinkedIn, and you can see the people that attended or are planning to attend those events, right? So those are people that are interested in what you're doing, right? So no matter what your business is, there's probably a way that you can use LinkedIn events to find people who are already pre-qualified and you know are interested in what you're doing. So you can view the attendee list, connect with them, work the whole system that we've just described. Another good thing LinkedIn's got going for it is LinkedIn Answers, where you can search for industry relevant Q&As, um, connect with people who have problems you can solve, you can use this to get ideas for new blog articles, you can link your blog articles and the answers to related questions. So again, lots of good stuff there. I see some people hustling on LinkedIn Answers, like really getting results, spending a lot of time on it, like every day going into LinkedIn answers and contributing 50 answers to different questions of all sorts, building their networks that way, connecting with people that might be interested in what they're doing. Like I said, entire businesses are being built on LinkedIn because there's just so much potential to connect with decision makers and business owners. Another great resource that they offer are LinkedIn ads, which are you have to pay for them. But LinkedIn ads are cool. The main reason is because you can drill down and target the exact type of person you want your ad in front of. So here's an ad I set up for an uh, ebook I have called uh, Cash Flow Clarity. Now you can see that this has not been you know, a huge success. One click, 36,000 impressions. Well, first off, I, I haven't paid anything for it because LinkedIn will offer, I think, $50 of free ads to try and incentivize people to give it a shot. And that's why I kind of jumped in here. But by doing that, I, I saw the back end of the system and how you can target specific business owners. So let's say you have an event that you're trying to promote. And it's in St. Louis. And you need business owners within a certain industry of a certain size. You can tell LinkedIn, I want this ad to be shown only to people that are in this industry at this seniority level in their company. Uh, and that their companies are of this revenue size. You know, there's all sorts of ways to slice and dice it so that your ads get in front of the right people. So whether you're trying to build your list and promote a free product, um, whether you're trying to promote an event, whether you're actually trying to promote something that is for sale, 
just, you know, there's all sorts of ways. So if selling to business people uh, or marketing to business people is something that you're doing, this is something that maybe you should consider playing around with. So that's um, mostly it. You know, basically in a nutshell, my approach to LinkedIn is optimize your profile, turn it into a lead generation tool, find and connect with the right prospects for your business, build a large database, and the reason the large database is so critical is because that's how you find prospects. That's how you're found by prospects. Right? Establish a messaging and marketing campaign. Join groups. Get active. Start a group. Become the expert. And now one thing that I kind of glossed over on the groups that I think I do want to note is it does take time and effort. Okay? And not everybody is is got the time to put into it for that stuff, but it can be a, a huge opportunity if you're willing to do it. You got to moderate it and make sure the content's good, that the quality is good, not be overly promotional. But again, I think establishing a group for your space um, and building it the right way is a fantastic way to build expertise. And then once you do all that stuff, you know, just keep washing and re-rinsing and, and repeating. Digging deeper, get involved in the Q and A's, LinkedIn answers. You know, researching things through LinkedIn events. Try some things out with ads. All that good stuff. All right, guys. Well, hey, I appreciate it. Um, you know, if you want to check out, you can see that I've got that link there on LinkedSelling.com. Um, I've been for the last year helping people out with uh, some LinkedIn stuff, whether it's setting up profiles, right, or just you know answering questions and kind of getting their head in the right place. You know, where they can best prospect or running entire campaigns for them. Um, so check that out. And if you got any other questions, feel free to email me.